YouTube, it's Brian Phillips here. Airbus A380. We are working on the flaps today. You're probably wondering if you miss a step. You did not. I did not film this step because it was so frustrating and tedious that I couldn't bear filming it. And the good news is we have the other side to do. The bad news is I'm not sure I'm going to film that one either. Here's why. Okay, progress update. <laughs> you notice they're both down. This is going to be my grow setting here. I just have temporary tape over the top of this right now. It's everything I could do to get it to have this much play. I did end up changing my settings a little bit. In the system setup. Aircraft type got switched to flapper on. That was the biggest change. Okay. So basically now, and then I added, um, because of that, inside flap mode, I only have my flap ROM deployment <coughs> at the top setting, but I'm going to do my elevator mix on the flap mode switch, even though this flap mode switch isn't per se controlling the flaps. These are going to be controlled on a mix. Now also stabilizer is on and all the way up. You can hear it. It's working. It's off. It's on. Sorry, it's kind of awkward to do this right now. Okay, so it's on and working. I don't know if you guys can hear that. There you go. With the spoilers deployed, it's on. Not much play, but it's still on. Okay. Oh, and with the flaps. Still working and off. Okay. So the stabilizer has not been defeated, which is the big part of this. However, I'm just going to warn you guys. If you're copying along the progress, hopefully you haven't copied exactly to date on this. If I had to do it again, I would extremely reluctantly go with a tape hinge. These hinges have been a nightmare as they have been every time I've tried to do a complex hinge like this. I cannot stress to you enough this wing is not flat. It is not square and that's why we have two hinges here and we have a hinge here. Okay. So just remember when you dive into this nothing is square anywhere. This isn't square compared to that, this isn't square compared to that, that isn't square compared to this, and this isn't square compared to that. And you'll notice that the servo isn't square. I probably had this servo in 10 different spots before I decided on where I wanted it. I am absolutely dreading the idea of doing this side <laughs> because it's gonna suck. I also have white lithium grease that's been injected to each of these. Okay. This, I had to reinforce this canoe, and I put control horns in here, embedded into the foam, foam, on either side. They're quite sturdy now, but that's just CA on there. I did that intentionally so that if something breaks, it can break instead of just like totally ripping the whole thing in half. Um, if you go with epoxy, it's going to be quite heavy. I would stay away from epoxy. I have double-sided tape shimming this in right now, which I'll give you guys a shot under there real quick. I cut this hole really neat, but the double-sided tape isn't peeled yet, so I can still pull this out, okay? Because good luck getting to the screws on that. It's going to be almost an inaccessibility um, by the time I'm all said and done, because how are you going to get your screwdriver in there? So if I cut a hole, sure, I can maybe get it in at a really steep angle, but you're going to have a heck of a time getting the screw to get but uh, purchase on that Phillips screw there. So anyway, and then as you know, 
as I mentioned, I had to do some mix changes. So under mixing, I'm up to 12 mixes right now. The last one is A, switch A, the gear switch. That's how I toggle an extra deployment of flap runs, okay? Regardless of condition, you can see how that works. But yet, there's still ailerons, okay? On 10, uh, 9, 10, and 11, I have the B switch tied to gear. And the way you can see this works is that B is tied to gear, meaning the actual switch condition as an output is being treated as an input. And then the gear reacts accordingly. And you see where the gear is? It's way over here. That's so we can stay within that operational range and keep the stabilizer on. If we get down to like 75, excuse me, 74, 73, it's going to shut the stabilizer off. Okay? So that's why that's going on. So basically I did this here tied to this switch position within B. Okay? Then I did the second position is the top setting and evidently the third is also the top position which that's actually supposed to be hold on I think I might have made a little typo glitch there oh no I just clicked on the wrong one that's the middle setting okay so basically what that does is in each of these three positions there's a different output expected now how did I slow down the output you say well, I did that back in servo setup. You can see I have no output below or above, and I have all the output below because it's on the negative part of the gear, okay? So go from travel over to reverse. You'll notice it's reversed. And I have a two-second deployment and a two-second retraction here, okay? So basically, it's reversed. And then I have zero compared to 150. That means it's never going to make it into this area here. So if one would ever decide that they needed to turn off the stabilizer, you can either turn it off with the dip switches on the actual receiver, and you just use it as a regular. And you see this? This is what happens when you've got just tape holding stuff in. Things are allowed to migrate a little bit. Now the other thing is I have this little adjustment, and thank God I did because that little adjustment has, has been a, a really huge improvement in my ability to get this all right. Now you'll also notice that there's a partial deployment left on these flaps. I'm actually okay with that because to be perfectly honest, any of these planes that I have that are scale aircraft in terms of, you know, like this Airbus A330, if I can make them fly slower without over, overwhelming it with drag, I'm gonna fly it slower. So a little bit of fixed flap, not going to bother me. However, I want you to see when you go from this position to this position, there's a dead spot in the middle, okay, because the geometry of the deployment. Now that can be satisfied by having this in the top hole, but then that cuts my full deployment to like maybe here, okay? So I just said, nope, not good enough. Also, I tried a bigger servo in this pocket. Um, it was um, Cortina, I forget what brand it was. It was a Hobby King one. And it just, it didn't work because if you're using a digital servo here and you have your, your trim or your uh, servo throws, your travel set to 150, you will have problems. You have to back that to like 145 maximum. 147 if you're really lucky, okay? Um, because when you get into the 150s, the digital servos start being weird. They start being allowed to like, just kinda keep going. <laughs> it's very weird. Um, I had that happen on the ASH 26. Backed it off by like three clicks, never had a problem. So. Be careful if you use the digital servo here. I would highly recommend against using a digital servo unless you have a programmable 
uh, servo and you can set the amount of range which would be awesome because then you don't give up anything. My biggest problem on this model to date is the fact that I really want to have speed brakes, air brakes, ground brakes, and spoilers, okay? So they're, they're all the same thing, guys. So what I wanted, I couldn't accomplish without getting really tricky in all my mixes, okay? But I feel like I've got it now. So now it's just a matter of getting it done on that side. Um, it was kind of a horrific process. It certainly wasn't something fun to watch, in my opinion. Um, the mixes and all that stuff are pretty much just on the fly as I'm going. I'm kind of working things out. I was just to show you this this way. So as you can see, we've got in the gear channel, we have the flaps Y cable plugged in. On the auxiliary two, we have one of the ailerons, which is the one that goes incidentally over to that side. And then on the ailerons, which the right side is over there, okay? And then of course we got our little temporary crappy shop battery here. Um, the other thing is when you're doing this stuff, be real careful that you don't totally kill your battery. I usually put a voltage alarm in there just so I know when I'm really getting bad. But I'm bad about, I'll just run this forever. And since we have four ESCs that are kind of driving this on the BEC side of things, we don't have such a big problem. But you do need to be a little bit careful about that because you can cause problems um, if you let them run. So without further ado, here, let's get you a shot of this from the top here. I feel bad leaving you out of this step, but it was just so tedious. Oh, that looks so gorgeous. So this would be like my pseudo takeoff, my pseudo landing, spoiler deployment. Okay, and you'll notice I've got a little bit right off the bat, okay? Now that little bit can be programmed out in the flap mode. Because like I was saying, the flap mode itself, the flap system, that's going to essentially drive my elevator correction so that when I deploy my flaps, I have that delay and that slow engagement. Otherwise, it's extremely hard to do that in a regular mix. I've done it before. It's very hard. Don't. I wouldn't recommend it. And I wouldn't recommend you do it either. So... The other thing is, if this gets pulled down, and it stays down, let's say, like two degrees, because I'm trying to get away with such a small servo, I don't think it's going to make a gigantic aerodynamic impact, because the air flowing above and below the wing may have a tendency to want to self-write this control surface anyway. So that's my only concern, additionally, is that when I deploy these things, um, see what happened? It's up now. That's because... My servo probably pulled out of the pocket because, like I said, I just have a temp in there right now. I'm sort of afraid of that last step of commitment of gluing it in. Yeah, see, it popped up out of the pocket here. I just have this double-sided tape that I can either peel that double-sided tape backing off and stick it into my pocket, um, or I can glue it. And I'm thinking I might do a little bit of both because this thing needs to hold on really tight. Now, one other thing to be really careful about as I'm learning... And I'm just kind of going over all these landmines that you could step on to try to help you avoid stepping on them yourself. But like, for instance, when I plugged this in initially today to work on it, it did one of those things where my radio didn't really connect. And so it went, um, servo went to center. Well, as you know, where's our servo right now, guys? On the gear? It's all the way to one side. Well, what happens if this thing goes to center? it's going to yank the flaps down to the extent that you may actually break this out of the pocket because this can only go so far and the, that thing will lift out of the pocket. So just be as careful as you can on that. Uh, a couple of landmines you'll want to avoid stepping on. But other than that, we're getting ready to dig back in on this other side. I'm not 100% sure if you guys are going to get an exhaustive look at this because it's just there's certain steps on these projects that just suck to film. And I'm really glad I didn't film the other side because I was down here for like six hours working on it. Which is ridiculous, I realize. Um, that all being said, I'm going to try to keep this uh, somewhat tidy and quick. 
because I already know what I'm doing on this side. <laughs> I knew what I was doing over there, by the way. It still took me six hours. So also this side is harder to move, which is horrifically bad for my situation. The kicker helped a lot. And so I definitely am going to use a little bit more of that to try to see if we can work out that last little bit of mucilage glue. And then what we're going to do is when we're done with that, if it works, if it moves free, we might go ahead and follow that up with some white lithium grease. And you might say, why, why would you use white lithium grease? Well, white lithium grease, is just it just seems to do good with plastic. Um, if you have a preferred, you know, lubricant that works well for other stuff, that that's fine. Just do whatever you, whatever you like. But I'll tell you what. I don't know how many times I uh, said something to myself last night. I said, "Why didn't you just tape hinge these things?" Because they would have it would have tape hinged fine, I think. Um, you know, when I say that now, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? But the truth is, if I would have tape hinged him, I probably would have come up with different problems, uh, different scenarios that would cause grief. So the other thing is, there's so many different places you could mount uh, control arms. But when you have something that's a little bit harder to move, like this doesn't seem hard to move when you're doing it with your arm. But, you know, like my arm, I could pick up 100 pounds easily with this thing. You know, so this doesn't feel like anything. But to a servo... <laughs> You know, this little dinky servo, it's a lot of torque requirement to move this thing. And if you compare it to something like just a completely neutral servo, um, it's a lot of torque requirement. Now, one other thing, too, that I just remembered as a thought from yesterday that I haven't addressed yet, and I need to kind of do it real quick before I forget, that is my spoiler deployment. You'll notice a lot of whining from the servos. Well, that's because I noticed that when I have deployment upward there's being created a pinch point here and I'll show you that and then I'm thinking we'll probably go ahead and try to correct that real quick if it's possible okay so my deployment here this is like my just general spoiler deployment which from conversation in previous videos you realize at some point there'll be spoilers here okay I did not go through all this effort and try to use that little minimal range on the flaps to have to deal with you know not having spoilers I'm I it was so much work. I wish I would have just said, screw it, and I'm just going to keep regular ailerons, or gave up the differential thrust, but I didn't give anything up because I'm too hard-headed. So in order to get this opened, here, I'll give you a shot while I have the camera right here. Whoops. You see what's going on, guys? Here. It's just touching. So it's got nowhere to go. It's not so much that it's touching underneath. Because look, we have plenty of play left. Well, I wouldn't say plenty of play. We have a little teeny bit. So what would need to happen is we would either need to cut this free or we would need to at least walk in here and widen this. Now, my rationale here is I'd like to widen the control surface, but I don't want to cut the actual hinge because I don't want to re-hinge this control. So the way I would normally do something like this is I would just take my knife and just like really, really carefully come in here and just brace your finger onto the knife, you see? And then you can sit here and actually just draw it back to yourself. And this is usually about the time the kids run into the room and like say, oh, daddy, hi, and they try to give you a hug or something like that. And you're thinking, oh, my goodness, not now, not now. And end up stabbing myself. Um, okay, so here it comes, guys. So now I'm going to go really slow because the blade is extremely sharp. So I don't want to damage anything else. So now let's go ahead and peel that out and see if we have any improvement. I'm hoping we do because we just lost material off the wing. Okay, so you see that was a fairly clean cut. Not perfect, but good enough that you're not going to notice it. All right, so now let's try that again. Still sounds like we got a little binding.
You guys see that, how it pulls in? That's so cool, how it goes in like that. It's a really complex shape. So it doesn't seem like it completely corrected the noise. I would say that it corrected it some, but not enough. So I don't know if that means I'm gonna have to rehinge this at some point. If I do rehinge it, it's not gonna be hinged with those stupid things. I'm just gonna use the, the regular Debro hinges. I've had better luck with those. Um, now the other thing we could do is if you knew that you wanted to try to keep the factory hinge, you could remove some of the material, like about a third of it. And then that would give it a little bit more freedom. So why don't I do that same cut over here and uh, then we'll come right back and we'll see if maybe the noise is partly coming from this side too. Yeah, this side's worse. It's really ticked off over here. Mm, it might be hitting down there a little bit too. Put the knife blade in. See, it's biting it. So maybe we can take a little bit, a little teeny bit off from here too. So I'm just gonna walk the blade down in there and just take a little sliver out. It doesn't take much. Cool. That uh, didn't really seem to make much of a difference. But you guys get the idea. All right, I'm gonna pause it. You've already seen me cut this. Okay, well, annoyingly enough, So the deployment, I thought maybe if I put them down, they'll, you know, they'll have the same, you know, noise or whatever. There goes my super, my servo popped out from the flaps now. But it seems like these things just are noisy when they deploy up instead of down. Not sure why that is. Doesn't look like we have a tremendous amount of play on the servo or anything. I'm not sure why they why they're so noisy that direction. It makes me wonder how high quality they are, but it wouldn't surprise me if they're just total junk either. So anyway, that's that's one of those things that you just run through when you're doing these projects, guys. You just kind of got to suck it up and try to adjust it, and if it doesn't fix what you, what you thought it might fix, well, then you got to live with it and move on to the next part. And that's what I've been doing for the last what, three or four days of, of work. So, the next step for us, of course, is to go ahead and pick up where we left off here. And uh, obviously I wanna just pop this back into the pocket. You'll notice I've got a really long lever arm here. That's to increase the amount of throw, but as you already know, that means that we're gonna reduce the amount of overall uh, strength that it has because it's way out at the end. Um, in our case, we, we have a pretty good amount of strength, so we're, we're good on that end, and it's a tremendous amount of strength from a small servo. But that being understood, it's, I mean, there's still only so much you can do with one servo, especially a little nine gram equivalent size. Um, I'm getting kind of sick of that thing popping out, so I'm gonna tape it back down. Hopefully it won't pop out as easy now. Now, obviously, when we're all said and done, we'll get these wires tucked in. All right, so this servo, do you remember way back when we started this project, we talked about the direction of travel, how it wasn't going to be super critical? Well, that was kind of honestly before I realized that we were going to be married to trying to keep um, flaperons and differential thrust. So that means now we've got this added complication of either having a, a rod go through underneath the landing gear, which I hate that idea, because if I ever do retracts, I'm gonna be stuck with it. Um, but as you can see, well, I don't know if you guys can see, so I'm gonna grab, see I've been experimenting with all sorts of different stuff here. We'll grab this control arm. This control arm we can stick here to give you guys a visual. See how it's pulling toward us? So that's what we need. We need it to pull toward us. So if I were to try to mount this in the same exact position, like this, then watch the direction.
Now let's put this the correct direction. Okay, watch. So he's going to try to push him out. Okay? So that's unacceptable. So we have to have it this way. And the way that I was able to control this whole assembly was to grab from about this point and move it. Now the further out, of course, the less leverage it takes, but the more throw it takes. You have to actually move this in and out further. And because we don't have that, I'm kind of married to this narrow point. And so my thought was initially, well, I'll, I'll try to put it here and see if I can pull it an angle. I can just about guarantee you we're basically just going to try to pull the whole thing toward us. It's not going to work. Now I could try to go here and see if I have good success and I'm willing to try it, the trouble is I already did over there. And every time I tried to attach to this product, uh, this thinner um, material here, I couldn't get it to stay. It would rip itself out. So what I'll probably end up having to do is the other option is I, I can't really go vertical, of course, because there's just not enough room in there. Because if you go vertical like this with your flap servo, then all you have is, is this asymmetry in that manner, okay? So I want to make it flat because then I can make a pocket and really hide that thing. And I think I've ruled out doing it here, but I haven't necessarily ruled out passing the wire through and actually changing the size of this body by trimming off these tabs. That would allow me to sit in this little pocket here and then really keep those controls close. And yes, I did try doing a direct, a direct linkage where this was actually out like that and it was attempting to drive the whole assembly. I tried that, I didn't have good success with it. Um, so I'm not sure that I'm even gonna try it again. If I have a wire, I could show you how crappy it worked. So this is the small wire I was using. It's a one millimeter wire. And mo most of what I was doing yesterday consisted of taking these, you know, whatever size we had available from my spare parts and I was just making these assemblies like this where this would actually go together with that and then I would drive it and then there's no play there's no adjustment and you were kinda of stuck with it but it worked well for what we were doing for the testing so we need something to actually bear the strength and spread it out into this plastic so that we can receive this relatively small um, control rod without just ripping the foam because I had actually just tried to pin it in there so let's try pinning it in there and I can give you a shot of what that does well first of all it's tight and I didn't want to cut and commit to the change in the body shape there well, let's just show you what it does I'll just I'll just show you we'll just run this through the foam and then uh, Oh man, that could rip right out, couldn't it? It's right on the surface, guys. I'll just show you. It's worth showing you. So now when I push this down, see what's going on? I just didn't have enough play. And because I didn't have enough play, I couldn't deploy the flaps far enough, even if I had everything fixed. See? It just didn't it just didn't have enough play, guys. So I may kind of fiddle with it and just show you what I come up with. So I think that's what we're gonna do, guys. Um because this is a whole new ball of wax because I have to mount this probably there. Um, and, and the r only realistic alternative would be here, and that's also going to suck bad um, for a variety of reasons. Unless I could make this act as the front half of the canoe, of course, as you know, that won't work because we have our actual hinge embedded, pointed into here, okay? So we can't use that spot. Now, the good news is this is nice and free right now, so that's great. Really, really good. Um, so I'll probably go ahead and lube that up. If you guys want to see that process first, it's probably a good idea to show you how I did that. Um, I'm just using this, whatever this is, like a Lucas Oil Products White Lithium Grease. And it's multi-purpose. So I just kind of 
take this whole assembly and I just push it up tight against there and just force a little bit. Obviously, there's no grease circ or anything like that. And I just push it into the plastic. And what this will do is this will... I mean, it's, it's going to lubricate, but beyond that, it's going to allow this to hopefully displace any possibility of having that glue, that mucilage, uh, kind of come back and, and re-secure itself. Okay, just do yourself a favor and wipe it off of there because you don't want a bunch of excess grease on here. You don't really want any grease on your foam plane, but you do if you decide to make a overly robust hinge. Okay, so now you can see it's still relatively smooth compared to what it had been. All right, guys, with that, the video's not over, but we're going to stop it for now, and I'm just going to give you guys a follow-up shot on what we do on this side. I hate to do it to you, but it's just it's too tedious to film this stuff. Um, and I'll give you guys a really good close-up. Maybe I'll take some shots as I go ahead and uh, stick that together so that I can make this assembly on this side. Alright guys, so um, this will be the second little part of the video here. You can see we've got these longer control arms, which I always think, boy, who's ever going to use those? Well, I am, evidently. <laughs> um, the rationale behind that, of course, is just because we're using such a limited part of our overall throw, we have to necessarily use um, we have to necessarily use this longer linkage, okay? And then I dig out of my bag of just like, you know, spare ends that didn't get used, and I grab two like this. That'll be, that'll be what we use to flank either side of the canoe. And that will give us the ability to pass a rod through and move this whole assembly. It's quite large, of course. Normally I don't give a crap about that detail. Well, who am I kidding? I usually do this, but I don't care about this. This is especially critical for the reason um, that it's going to be... You don't want it to catch anything as it's rotating, okay? It doesn't care if it... I mean, you shouldn't worry about if it's, uh, you know, ugly. It's just more about... Since it's going to be in a pocket anyway, you just don't want it to catch material. All right, so... So now I'm actually going to shoot this up under here. Now, I would love it if I could do this in a different way than I did that one because that was such a pain. I was thinking about showing you guys this other method here earlier, and I just I didn't do it, but I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should do it for you guys so you can see what I was talking about. See, because you can't trim these with your electronics at all now because you don't have enough trim to work with. Whatever you do, you got to either make a mechanical trim or you got to move it off. Or you get to mount it at a different angle. Okay? So suppose that's where we went and mounted that, or we wanted to, to go ahead and mount that. Um, what I did was I took two of these things, and now I did trim it. Uh, I took the smaller half. Okay, so yeah. One of these is longer, one of these is shorter. See, that's the longer half, and then this is the shorter half. Well, maybe they're about the same. They're close. One of them is bigger. Yeah, this one's bigger. This one's smaller. So what I did was I embedded this in there, but I had to trim off about half of it. Okay. So I take and cut it about here to avoid having it shoot through to the top of the wing surface. And of course, the reason for that is so that it, it just... You can sandwich either side into the canoe. And this, this gives you another place to kind of catch glue, and it just it really makes for a really strong um, installation. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just get that glued in now real quick. And we're going to use CA Kicker, 
and the knife is really all you need for this step. It's not hard. You don't have to get super specific on placement, but you want it to make a relatively straight angle if you can. Okay, so I, I just kind of push it in a little teeny bit to the foam and then make your slice. Okay, then you can just drop this down in there just like that. See, it's super easy. And that gives you just tons of surface area to get CA. And of course you want to get CA behind it. And I actually ended up on the other side, I ended up going into like the third hole down or the fourth hole down. Just depends on how things line up over here. Um, so this side will just kind of line it up on the other side. This side cut in a little bit nicer to the foam. But over there, when I tried it, just kind of compressed it. You know how foam will do sometimes. So now this gives you all these different options for places to mount without running the fear of actually ripping through the foam. Uh, you rip through the foam, you're done. It's going to look like crap unless you, you know, glue it up and it just gets really messy. So we'll go ahead and grab some CA. This is just your medium, medium CA. And I have got to have some kicker too. So we got our kicker here. So we've got that ready to go. And basically we'll just take and run this down the spot and then left and right. So we make that kind of like that cross shape. We'll just dive this down in there with the understanding that we can now glue all the way down the sides and then we can actually glue into the middle of that thing too and usually when I do that much glue I would do it in a couple of different steps but I want to get it stuck in there first and then I'll come back in and do another stage of gluing as well you guys have seen I kind of gotten away from spraying this kicker and I've gone to just where I drip it on it's a lot easier to control the the speed, the cure speed, when you do it that way. And this stuff has a tendency to want to run on you, so it doesn't run near as bad. Okay, so that's set up totally. Um, now I can glue from the back side here. And then just run another bead down either side here. And then I can actually go inside there and on top of there, and then over and then down. And as you can see, you just get a really big surface area. And now that we actually have that done, even though this is still loose, I just give that one spray. You see what I'm talking about, how much is wasted? It's kind of hard to tell in the video, I'm sure, but it's just all over the place. So, obviously the idea is to, you see why I'm talking about not wanting to film this step, is it's just, everything is so hard to see and reach. Because the plane is so dang big. Well, it's really not that big. I'm sure a lot of you guys have been watching Rami's build. That thing is awesome. The 777. It's just beautiful. Um, Rami RC. And then there's a guy that used to be on YouTube. And he started and did a super nice production. He's building like an Airbus A310, I think, right now. But then he's more or less migrated over to Instagram, I think. And his is also very cool. Much bigger than Rami's, in fact. I think it would take up his whole garage. But um, he's very inconsistent with his video, um, video series. So I think he's on like part three. And I had no clue, of course. And it's like, hey, good job making a video series that nobody can find. <laughs> Believe me, I look for them, too. I don't just make the videos. I watch them. Okay, so you can see here, guys. And the beauty of it is you can't hardly see it once it's in there. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, yeah, I can see that, Brian. Sure, you can see it. But when I'm done, I can clip off this tail on the top once I've been 100% satisfied. Keeping in mind, I can get more leverage out here if I have issues with, you know, not being able to pull this thing. Um, 
but that gives me somewhere to now put a rod through and then I can make my linkage to the the moving portion of my controls now here's the other problem with doing this right here is that that would literally have to sit on the surface because I can't embed that in the foam because then my angle would get all screwed up okay so let's just show you real quick but um, one thing I need to glue the back side of this one again You guys are lucky that I'm a glutton for punishment here because I seem to be filming this whole stage and I just got done telling you how I wasn't going to do that. But I just can't leave you guys behind. It's just too much fun having you with me. Okay, so you see these little pins here? These little pins are just cut off from that one millimeter and then I made a couple that were like this where they're bent and that works really handy but I need the longer one to actually reach through and I actually I think I'm gonna sharpen this one real quick so we'll just go ahead and So you wouldn't have to sharpen it, but I've been fighting it this on the last one, and I kind of said to myself, oh, I'll just stop and sharpen it real quick. Never did it. Okay, and I'm about to knock over my kicker with the cap off. That's not smart. Okay, so now uh, use the sharper end, and let's just see where I did it over here, and we'll try to duplicate it. Looks like on this side I went in one hole, two hole, three hole, fourth hole down. But I also did the sixth hole down as well. So on this one I'll probably go ahead and start a little bit lower. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm just spinning it. Not a drill bit, it's just a kind of a sharp piece of metal here. See how it's peeling out that little bit of CA? That's annoying. Manageable, but annoying. Gotta count again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So now I'm probably gonna smack dab hit my control inside there which wouldn't surprise me now if I do it's not actually a bad thing at all because then I can heat this up and run it through there as well and that's going to give me a lot of strength a really a lot of strength which I really in, invite the idea of having extra strength if it's possible because while this looks fairly strong let's just put it this way um, it's not as strong as I'd like it it never is doesn't matter how strong I actually have it. Now keep in mind I want to try to get through it as straight an angle as I can and I'm struggling to do that right now for a variety of reasons not the least of which would be the fact that I'm trying to go through a piece of solid plastic. Okay, so when you do this, you, you're committed once you start, guys. I'm on the other side, but it won't make it through. So I'm actually going to do the right thing and just let it cool for a second. Eh, it looks like I went too far down. Okay, so now I have to try to pull this out. Believe it or not, these things really cool quick when you do stuff like that. Oh, but I didn't want to get soot all over it. Dang it, I knew that was going to happen. Trying to avoid it. Didn't, though. Whatever. I guess it is what it is now. Okay, so I'll take the clean side, I guess. It's like I say, guys, you always got to wipe off the tip. 
before you penetrate. Okay, so it feels like I'm just about ready to hit the other side there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just heat up the only the tip and I'm just gonna go really quick. Get it to a molten stage just below the temperature of the sun. Then through, easy does it. There you go. There's something about this hobby that you can't help but be leaning over all the time. If you've ever had a back injury, you'll completely understand what I'm talking about. And it's annoying. <laughs> it's very annoying. All right, so you see this? Now I'm gonna align this right there. Even though it's probably still warm, it's not gonna be hot enough to melt it yet. I'm gonna grab it from the other side and just try to walk it through. Now fortunately these um, wires were about the right size. Oh, one other really good tip is for whatever reason this crappy old masking tape has actually worked really nice because it's super sticky. It's like way stickier than it should be for being masking tape since it's really old and junky. So I've been able to use it to kind of hold these servos in place as I do some tests that normally I don't think would be a success, okay? So like this, I've just got it taped down. Um, it's actually almost as tacky as the 3M double-sided tape. All right, so here we go. <laughs> See what I'm talking about? It deploys them, but it doesn't deploy them far enough. And the other thing to keep in mind is if that was held down, that might be enough. See? That's actually not that bad. Man, I would love a happy accident right now. That would be so awesome. Good thing I got my cap on, guys. It's like I'm always saying, keep your cap on and your tip clean. <clears throat> I'm just going to slide this over here. And my hope is, I think I'm going to investigate a little bit more on this. Now you guys at home are probably thinking, man that's a lot of overkill for getting a rod through the, the wing. Well, you're right, but I did like 50 things trying to avoid it. It was like a humongous fiasco. I wasted literally hours of my life. Luckily I didn't waste hours of your life on that part. So you see the angle here is really the critical part. And we're actually missing the tab. Isn't that crazy? But you see, we're not getting it all the way back to where it needs to go. Mmm. That's unfortunato. You know what we need to do? We need to go ahead and we need to just take this off. And we need to just undo this one connection point here. And what we're going to do is... Well, just don't get ahead of yourself and break something. I did that about 47 times yesterday, too trying to like hurry up and yank it out of there or whatever. Again, clean tip, wipe your tip off, keep your cap on, and don't yank it out. So, rules for life. Here we go. This here, if we put it all the way to the end, okay, I'm gonna just, well, it doesn't matter if that pushes through, we can adjust that later. I'm just going to put it there. If I needed to, I could make a landing gear clear that. The wire, I could embed below it. No big deal. Okay? Let's see if this works. I doubt it will. Nope. It's so dang close, though. That is super tempting, guys. It is so close to being right, and yet it's not. Um, hmm. I'm just going to, I just want to visually see this here. That is really close. I don't actually hate the way it works, guys. I don't. I thought I was going to, and I just, I, I don't actually. Mostly because I spent so many hours fighting that one yesterday that I realized you kind of got to take what you can get, right? Um, and if I trimmed off both these tabs, I could probably embed it in the foam 
fairly neatly there. All right, but before we do that, I'm going to see if I can um, see if I can move it over to the other side for a minute so that I can just try one thing. Okay, so remember, landing gear retracts. If we ever do that, they're going to retract over here. And I'll probably have to build up the base a little bit, so this could be a, an issue later. But let's just see... Let's just see if I can get it up here. Um, yeah, I think that's a no-go. Whoops, sorry. Hmm. Man, that lube helped a lot. Really, it did. It's made everything just smoother and less friction, which, which is what lube does. Less friction, less arguments, <clears throat> more enjoyment. What else does lube do? Reduces heat, you know, but I mean, well, it depends on how you're using it, I guess. Hmm. All right. I need to try this with a longer rod. <sighs> Guys, I swear I'm not doing this on purpose. It is working out that way, though. Ooh, look at that. It's long enough to reach. It's always convenient. I didn't expect that either. See what I'm thinking, guys. I'm just going to try to bring that rod over here, which could potentially give us a little bit of adjustment. A little bit. A little bit. Okay, I'm going to hold that down. Yeah, that sucks the big one. That's not going to work. I would have to have the rod all the way through, which we can test next. You, you see why I didn't film yesterday? All this talk of rods and clean tips and helmets and keeping things on and here we go let's run this through here all right so now we'll go ahead and go into that the dirty hole you want to just the one that's kind of marked a little bit darker get in there get in there sometimes it's hard to get it started when it's that one but once you get it in there it should work just fine get in there uh, I'm not sure why I'm having so much trouble with this one. Oh, you know why I didn't sharpen the tip I I'm just gonna have to take a second and sharpen this son of a gun otherwise it's gonna be too much frustration you can see how easy it is though Okay, that should make it a lot easier to get good penetration through the dark, dirty hole. See how much easier that was? That was way easier. All right, guys, here we go. Oh, oh, is that it? I think, oh, yeah, that's it. That was the spot there. So now I'll just push this down. And then I gotta try to see these teeth on these servos only allow so many different positions. Oh. Could this be the ticket? No. Not enough deflection, not enough deployment. Definitely not right. Definitely not gonna work. No, it worked better, way better on the other side. Way better. Okay, well, that's not surprising at all in this application. So now what I was trying to do was I was going to do one of these adapters which has a limited amount of flex in that you can sit here and move from hole to hole until you get the correction that you need. Okay, so same one millimeter rod between these two pieces I got a little L shape gives you a quick decouple now you got to keep in mind, once these things are in their pockets, they're in there. You're not going to be able to take them out every single time you need to make a, an adjustment. So it's important that you try your best to kind of, you know, make things work. Okay, so now just, I'm going to give you a shot of how much actual movement there is here. Not much movement, right? Look at that. 
maybe a half an inch. Okay, so let's stick this down. Now remember, we can embed this now into the foam, and then when we bury that, it's going to actually make the geometry slightly better. Um, so, we'll go ahead and line this up. And then you see what I'm talking about here. We can just grab one of our little test pieces here, and we'll, we would be cutting um, probably a piece of rod when we get ready to actually you know, finalize everything with an adjustment, like this little V-shaped adjustment. That son of a gun. I must have actually cleaned that one up a little bit. Nope, not enough, evidently. Okay, good job. Good job, me. Congratulations on getting that sharp. Okay, so now this is this is obviously going to be higher than the hole that we had been using. You know what? That's a good point. I'm probably going to need to actually use this gigantic rod to go into the dirty hole. And I want to try to make this actuation... See? Now we're through. Okay. Now let's go ahead and slide that through. Alright, just we'll just see how this works. I doubt it's going to work right. You see, it's just, it's always hard to hold these things, because i got to push down on here. Okay, here we go. That's actually not bad. you got to get it where it sort of works halfway to your liking, and then you got to commit to a position that's going to allow you to potentially finish the job. Okay, so now, if I wanted to, I could hypothetically at this point, I could measure. Now, what I'm going to do is going to seem a little bit strange. Oh, that son of a gun. You see? It's under pressure, so it's going to have to move back. I'm going to put that neutral. Plugging it in. Back to where we wanted it. I think this is going to be the way we're going to have to do it. And I think reluctantly, but I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to cut the tabs off of that. I just don't see a way of getting around it because we're going to lose too much torsion. We're going to have too much torque load on the actual rod if we end up trying to do it from here. Now, we could do it from here. One other thought. Or we could have one of these on each side, which would keep that rod from bending as much. <sighs> I gotta think on that for a second. Okay, I thought on it for a second. I think our best bet is to just go ahead and get this out. Now, the other thing we could do is we could, um, to give ourselves some room, just like wiggle room, on the way that this all lines up, we could just move this back a little bit. It doesn't have to be at that particular angle. We just need to make sure it's out of the sweep of where the landing gear would be in the event that we had retracts, okay? So let's say that that's where we put it. Nope, we don't reach now. <laughs> okay, I take everything back. Go ahead and use your dirty tip for the dirty hole. That's not what I was talking about, I guess. All right, here we go. We got to cut those tabs off. I'm sick of talking about it. This inaction is driving me crazy. I'm cutting the tabs off. And then I'm going to take that sticker off that says Emacs. Hey, look at that. It already took it off for me. I do hang on to these for later in case there's questions about what servo it is. I don't think those actually identify the model number, though. This does. Emacs is so nice that they have a protective cover that comes over the servo marking. That's just crazy. Who does that other than Emacs? Okay, so we're trimming that off. Trimming this off. All right, so now we're gonna get we're gonna get aggressive. We're gonna clean this up. Okay, got that cleaned up. Okay, got that cleaned up. Not looking for perfection, but we are looking for 
a little bit of smoothness there even though we're going to score it up here in a minute with our knife hey whatever happened to not filming this guys what the heck happened to that oh this foam it picks up every little black piece of whatever it's so annoying you see that that is super super annoying i gotta take a piece of tape now and do this look look at that isn't that annoying All right, here we go. Yes, yes. I wanted to throw that piece of tape away, but I was, I decided not to. I'm glad I kept it. it served a purpose. Okay, that little piece, that little piece, that little piece that's remaining, and then this little piece, we'll just trim those off with a knife. Now remember, this is gonna be, how is that gonna be? How is that gonna be? It's gonna be this way, okay? <laughs> Of course. So it's it's gonna be, let me just get this tangled out of there. It's gonna be like this, okay? But we may actually need to do it this way, just for the simple fact that we wanna be able to reach it from further back. Um, but I have to test that theory quick. All right, so this we need to try All right, just like that, guys. So you can see what I'm talking about, about it's, it's just gonna fit a whole lot better. So here we go. All right, so we've got that slit in there now, and you can see it's gonna fit, which is good. Now, where the heck did that other piece of tape go? There was a piece of tape. Here's the piece of tape. It's like one of those kids shows. Where's the tape? Is it here? No. Is it here? Yes. All right, here it goes, guys. Oh, you son of a gun. Oh, don't get your finger there. That is really close to what we need. Real close, guys. The only thing about it is that when we embed this into the foam, we may have to change the angle a little bit again. And you gotta keep in mind, look how far back we are. We're not gonna have any edge on the back. So when we glue it, we're gonna be gluing this side, this side, this side, and the bottom. No, it's gonna be this side, this side, and the bottom. Can't glue this side because we got the arm coming out. So we're gonna have to be really careful to get a good blue, uh, good glue joint there, so it doesn't pull the thing out of the pocket from the rear. Might actually be trying to deploy a little bit too much, actually. Okay, so that all being understood, we already talked a little bit about this. We're running out of time. Um, but if I could put it forward, that'd be great. The problem is then I've got a linkage that's going through where the landing gear is going to be. So I think, I don't think we really have a choice. The other thing is the sweep of the landing gear may already be cutting pretty close. So I'm going to have to be kind of careful the way I get my wires out. I think in this case, I'm just going to have to chase them up on top and then just go straight down. And then if I need to modify it when I do retracts, if I do retracts, then I'll do it. For now, guys, we're so close. I'm really excited that you're here with me. Come back for more Brian Phillips signing out. Please click the like, subscribe, do both. Check the link in the descriptions below. There's about 30 of them. Buy something useful for yourself. Help support our channel. We appreciate you doing that. As always, thanks for watching.